Hello, tea friends. This is Barb Gully, Barb's Tea Service, and we are back in the studio for our latest podcast, courtesy on TV Studios. Mm -hmm. And this is our 19th podcast. We're rolling. (laughs) We are. So, I'd like to introduce our studio engineer, Arm Candy. Here I am. And co host, Chris Gully. Hi, Chris. Hi. Do you know what today is? What, what holiday? What today? holiday? Um, is it um, Stay in Bed Day? <laughs> no, no. I'd like one of those okay. actually, but yeah. no. Oh, it is International Podcast Day. Amazing. I know. It, you know what? And it's kind of interesting that we are in the studio yeah. on this very day because we yeah. typically don't come to the studio on Monday. We're not very observant people, are we? <laughs> I think, well, we have a schedule, but we've, we've yeah. been yeah. Uh, here and we there. Had to, we had to mix it up. So this is National Podca- International Podcast yes. Day, right? September 30th, uh-huh. and we're doing a lot this week with podcasts, which, yes. and this is day one. Right, right, right. So we're kicking it off, even mm-hmm. though it's just a day, we're going to be, it's probably podcast week for us. Anyway, yep. Yep. as noted mm-hmm. by the National Day calendar, mm-hmm. This is how they describe International Podcast Day. Right. It's dedicates September 30th to promote the growing media of podcasts and the technologies surrounding it. Around the world, Uh people listen to their favorite podcasts to keep up with the latest news, technology, entertainment, or information. (laughs) I hope we fall somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Sure. Why not? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> kind of taking some liberties right. there, but I think I know what our favorite podcast is. I, 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 I think I know too. Okay. All right. Very good. It's Barb's Tea Service Podcast. It is. It's amazing. And, I love it. Uh, <laughs> good. <laughs> and this is, people can find this. Yes. Uh, various so, ways. So, yeah, SoundCloud, yep. um, which is, is posted there. Uh, two YouTube channels, either on. Uh, Orion on TV's uh, channel or Barb's Tea Service channel. Right. And then it also uh, appears on the Apple podcast. Right. Search for it. Lots of places. Lots of places. Yep. So that's exciting. It is. Okay. So now we're a little rusty because <laughs> we've, we've, been, been, we've been doing other things. Other things. We've been on another few weeks hiatus. Yes. Uh huh. And we were on the road, mm-hmm. or more aptly, we were on the water. We were on the water. We are. We were kind of looking out in, in September uh-huh. because in Michigan, the weather's been... It can be dicey. It can be dicey, but we've been getting this long yeah, summer right. instead of it an early fall. It never ends. <laughs> <laughs> so we were able to take advantage of being outside a lot yeah. more and on the boat. Yes. So we were up north with uh, family for mm-hmm. a few weekends, and we... Yep. Use the pontoon. Yes. And then we did something very different for us. We did. We chartered we chartered a sailboat. Yes. On the Grand Traverse Bay. Uh-huh. And we went with our expert sailing friends, yep. mm-hmm. Rick and Carol. Yep. They chartered the waters exactly. for us. Exactly. So then we went to the Leelanau Peninsula and we went all the way to the end where North, they, Northport. Northport. Yep. Okay. And <laughs> there was a lighthouse yes. there. Mm-hmm. We got to tour that yes and then we we made a few other stops right so scenic up there went to fish town went to fish town yep. and around fish town yep. mm-hmm. i went to the leelanau bookstore yes so all of this stuff inspired the theme for today's podcast yes and that was how did england yep. get their tea uh-huh. in the time of jane austen yes this is a question that came yeah. up. Yeah, well, we, we were kind of, you know, uh, having that experience. And then um, uh, things kind of change and they don't change. Uh, people, were, we we would call it today, uh, what was the supply chain? Yes. Uh, they would just call it the tea trade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a lot of the same, a lot of the same factors. And as we kind of, as you kind of started researching, it's really quite interesting about how, um you know, things like this drive technology and, you know, your your process of, you know, getting things and trade and how you pay for it. And 
exactly. and, and get it, getting it to market as quickly as possible. Right, yeah. right. Some of those things you just take for granted. Yes, yeah. So, but somebody has to invent all of that the first right, time. Right, right. So we're going to talk about that. And then if we have time, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about a couple of really neat additions to our Pemberley Pines Tea Garden. Yes, our, one of our favorite places. One of our absolute favorite places. Right. And then also a cool yes. i'm doing air quotes here uh -huh. a cool trend in home design home interior design i wonder what that could be mm. i think we're going to find out we are all right but first tea okay so today i mentioned that i stopped at the leelana bookstore yes and they carried this tea uh-huh it's jane austen tea right okay can uh -huh. you see that I on can. the camera yes you can okay yep and this is a collection from Simpson and Bale. Uh -huh. They do literary teas. Uh -huh. And this came recommended uh -huh. at the bookstore. So I thought, well, let's try this. It fits really yeah. great with our theme today because yeah. we want to talk about how tea came to England yeah. in Jane Austen's time. Right. And so I thought, well, hey, let's yep. try a little bit of this. Very good. Now, uh, Jane Austen, she... Uh, would purchase her tea in London at a uh, place that still exists today, and that is Twinings, right? Twinings, yep. right. And that was where the Austins preferred to get their tea. So, I'm tasting mm. that. Yeah. What so, do you think of this? Uh, at first, for some reason, I had it in my mind that we were doing an Earl Grey, oh. and I, I kind of had myself set up for that. And it's not an Earl Grey, like, at all. It's, no. a, it's a black tea. It's got some, uh, some additions, and uh, it's got a... Uh, uh, kind of a minty aftertaste, not unpleasant. Uh -huh. And so there's some mint in there. I'm thinking. Yes. Okay. There, there's spearmint. Okay, spearmint. Oh, that's. Are what you it picking is. up anything else? Um, kind of uh, some florals um, in there. I would say. So. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. but the mint, it, mint, the mint like kind of comes across. Is strong. Yeah. And it has a little bit of lavender. Yes. Okay. And some vanilla. All like right. Kind okay. of that creamy. Yeah. 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 There right? you go. Yeah. And we do grow spearmint. Uh huh. We do at the tea garden. We do. So we could work yeah. on something, but something you're always interested in is yes. what what the tea would pair with. So what would I? Yeah. What would we have with this? And I I would say um, so. It's this is a uh, I don't see this because of the mintiness. I don't see this. Uh, you would have um, like with an entree or a main meal, maybe right. lamb or something like yes. that. Yes. <laughs> maybe. Right. right. You know? Uh huh. But. Uh, but I would say this would this would go well with a you know a, a, like a, a pastry a scone with some fruit you know would be a, a kind of a nice repast. Okay, I'm I'm not a fan of melons, but this yep. this would pair with melons. Yes. Okay. Strawberries. Yes. Okay. And I don't want to give away too much for about a future podcast. We're going to be talking about a really interesting, fun pairing that we're going to be doing. Yes. Very shortly. All right. And, it's exciting. But All anyway, right. so All we're right. talking about our Jane, our Jane Austen tea. All right. Very good. I like it. Okay. So, all right. So let's get to the uh, mm -hmm. the shipping, literally yes. shipping, okay. right? Yes. All right. So we were doing a lot of, as I mentioned, we were on the boat a lot yeah. mm -hmm. the past few weeks. We were on our pontoon, mm -hmm. which is really just a... You said it's a, a floating couch. A floating couch. <laughs> it's the best kind of couch. It is. <laughs> Very nice. But then we had to work a little bit more when we were doing this sailboat in Grand Traverse Bay. Right. And, well, we didn't really work well, too hard. So it was a, it's a, <laughs> it was a 38 foot um, a single masted mm -hmm. sailboat. Mm -hmm. um, and it was built in Costa Rica, I believe, according to the captain. Okay. So back in the 90s. And it was. Very well appointed. A lot of nice woodwork around uh, around it. It was it was it was great. It was it was yeah. a beautiful boat, yeah. and we again had a great day. Mm -hmm. So our friends were doing the steering, right? And the captain was working the sails. Yep, yep. And and I, and we were working hard to stay out of the way. <laughs> we were, <laughs> and and we do that really well. Yes, I, I'm, right. I'm kind of proud of us yeah. for that. But <laughs> so one thing though, I noticed that you were looking at. I don't know if they call it a dashboard right. on a boat. Right. Uh, the, they got gauges and whatnot. Right. So I was kind of looking at, you know, direction and uh, depth, and, and then they would kind of give an approximate uh, uh, speed. 
And how fast was that going? I mean, yeah. So, uh, so the, the, we had very good wind. Mm-hmm. Very, they're very consistent, mm-hmm. and sometimes they would really kind of puff up, and we'd heel over. So, in general, uh, according to the, the the speed gauge, we were running between five and seven knots. Okay. Per hour. Okay, and that was with really almost perfect conditions, yes, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, believe it or not, yes, that speed is what the speed would have been for these yep. your, the first trade merchant ships yep. in England crossing the ocean yeah crossing the ocean and it's the, it's kind of a kind of a walking speed <laughs> <laughs> i know and uh, if you're bringing in yeah. you know foreign goods yeah. it's going to take a while and that's yeah. sort of what was happening here right. so in 1600 right we have queen elizabeth the 1st right she grants a royal charter right to the east india company mm-hmm. And they get a monopoly on all the trade coming into England. Right. Okay. And the 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 warrant that they got it it sort of lessened as yeah it, you know, as got, time went on. The time and, went yeah, on, and yeah. they eventually lost their monopoly in right. 1834. But before that, yep. they pretty much yeah they ran the show. They ran the show. Right. So in tea comes to England in the mid 17th century right and we've talked about this before right charles ii mm-hmm. he brings his wife who's from portugal yep. catherine yep big trading nation big trading nation in fact they uh, along with the dutch the portuguese right. were one of the first to bring tea to europe yes okay so she brings her tea chest mm-hmm. to london and, and people said what's that <laughs> they, it was kind of a curiosity yep. but she really helped add to the, the popularity of tea in England. Right. Add a little panache, a little status. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, in fact, she was referred to as the first tea-drinking queen. Okay. And she was praised by a lot of people yeah. because they thought there was too much yeah. imbibing yes. of alcohol. Yes. And, in fact, according to uh, one of the books that James Norwood Pratt wrote, right. he says that the breakfast for Queen Elizabeth uh-huh. I yes. consisted of... Uh-huh. Meat, uh-huh. bread, and a gallon of beer. Wow, that's a, a breakfast of champions or something. It's kind of <laughs> interesting. I mean, it's yeah. not even five o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Although I would say the beer was probably so. You know, we talked about this. Um, water was not very good back in the day. It was, it was uh, fairly unsanitary. So, oh, right, right. So they would ferment uh, with uh, with various grains. You know, to in- introduce alcohol of some level to basically sterilize the water. So right. the alcohol level was not, you know, was probably fairly low. But you know, I'm sure you even so. A- you know, after your <laughs> after your breakfast, you might have a something of a buzz. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I would think a <laughs> yeah. gallon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, this. Uh, so with the and the tea kind of took care of that too because right. You're yeah, because you're boiling the tea. Right, yeah. right, right. So now that. We have this East India Trading Company mm-hmm. going to China, right. getting the tea. Right. They had this monopoly, so they really didn't have to worry about competition. Right. So they really went more for economy than expediency. Right, right. So they had these great big ships right. with these big hulls right. that could carry a lot of cargo, uh-huh. but they were slow. Yeah. Okay. And uh, one thing that, so they had these big hulls, but they had this thing they, they called square rigging. Yes. Now, so, there's a sailor term. Right. So, you know, <laughs> modern sail, you know, you know, so you have the triangular, you know, sails on, on modern. And so basically you're, that sail is kind of almost acting as a wing. And you'll notice when we were on the boat, we would heel over when the wind, and then we would really take off. Square sailing is basically you're, you're depending on pretty much, you know, following the wind. Right. And so that's where we get the term, you know, the trade winds. So. You know, you would want to have a following wind to kind of push you along. And they weren't much maneuverable, you know, after that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So it was at the cost of right. getting the tea back right. quickly. Yeah. So just to give you an example of a timeline. Right. These ships would leave England mm-hmm. in January. Right. they go around the Cape of Good Hope. Right. Around Africa. Right. Get to China mm-hmm. in September of that year. Right. And that's just yeah. the first leg. Right. <laughs> they got to come back. Yeah. And that would take almost another year. Right. So, you know, the tea wasn't really fresh. 
fresh. Right. And again, they're still going about the speed we did yep. in our sailboat right. in the Traverse Bay. So even all conditions, everything being great, right. your fresh harvest tea yeah. is already... At least a year. At least a year. Right. And when we talked earlier about, in podcast about expiration date, right. then we said that some black teas right. can hang in there for up to three years. Under optimal conditions. Up, under optimal conditions. So you're figuring by the time this probably reaches Twinings in yeah. Jane Austen, right. it's already two-thirds yeah. of the way to its expiration date. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But anyway, this was also a time when a lot of the importers went to prefer black teas, right. even though people, popularity, they, they like the green tea better. Right, right. But the black tea, we know it has the longest oxidation period. Yep. It's more stable. It's more stable. It doesn't. It's right. not as prone to, to mildew, right. and, and it hangs on to its flavor a little bit more. Right. So There you go. There you go. So then we have East India Company losing its monopoly in 1834, right. and things started to change. Right. So this brought in the rise of the clipper ships. And that was, these are interesting boats. They are. They're smaller. Right. But they're faster. Right. And they have sails that so that the, yeah again kind of it would be more angular they would have more of the triangular they would have a combination of square sails and triangulars i'm not i'm not a, a sailor guy so <laughs> don't ask me to explain uh-huh. it but basically it would uh, it would do whatever they could do to you know catch either a following wind or be able to attack into the wind or whatever so they weren't as delayed uh by uh, by you know contrary winds and they would it was they were a lot more efficient Yes, yes. So they couldn't carry as much, right. but they could go a lot faster. Right, right. So anybody now who has a, a clipper ship right. and a little bit of silver right. can be in the tea trade. Because the Chinese preferred silver. That's right. For yeah. foreign, yes, they did. They yeah. preferred the currency. So the so all, now all of a sudden you've got all these people out there with their clipper ships. Yep. And the big deal is right. to be the first one back with the tea. And it was a competition. It was a competition. And this gave way to these clipper yep. races, right. clipper ship races. So these guys could go up to 20 knots. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. They're it's going, a, yeah, it's a good clip. They're going fast. And because they could go fast, they could, again, they couldn't bring in as much cargo, but they also didn't have to have as much crew. Right. So it could be 25 right. to 50 guys. Yeah. That's all they needed. And they could turn around inventory a lot quicker. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Took half the time right. a round trip mm-hmm. as the... the East India Company right. big ships. Mm-hmm. So now it's this big competition to right. get the the tea back as soon as possible. Right. And this went to in the the mid eighteen hundreds. Uh huh. It evolved into this huge event. Right. The Clipper races. There was a lot of media interest. There was. There was. So there was again. There was a premium. For the the first tea that came on, you right, know, people would pay more for this. Exactly, and it got a, just a lot of excitement and anticipation, not just from the dealers, mm-hmm. the tea dealers, but the general public. Yes, this, this was like a yeah. big derby race, and they would bet on these things. They would bet. Yeah, yes. can you imagine that? Yeah. So, what they would do, the crowds would gather. There'd be telegrams being right. sent uh-huh. at yep. when these ships would make certain marks. Yeah. So they kind of had an idea. Yep. And then some of the dealers would stay at nearby hotels. Yes. And some would even sleep yeah. on the docks because yes. they didn't want to miss it. They wanted to be the first ones there. When it they, was the thing. It was the thing. <laughs> so when the first ships came in, right, they they would unload their cargo, go right to the tasting rooms. Right. These dealers would taste it, bid yep. on it, mm-hmm. sales were made, and then it would go all over England, yes. just be exported all right. over or transported all over. Right. So... This was, there was not just prestige in being the first boat there. Right. You know, mm-hmm. we, were, we won. Yep. But there's also a monetary, yep. often a monetary reward. A bonus, perhaps. A bonus. All right. Could be up to 500 pounds. Right. Back in the 1850s. Yeah. And that was, that's when it was real money. <laughs> <laughs> so if we're translating this to uh-huh. current day pounds and dollars. Right. Then we have, uh, it would be about 84,000 dollars. 84,000 pounds, which is about $112,000. To be split. To be split among 25 to 50 people. So a little little 
change. It was incentive. Yeah. I mean, what would you do with an extra $2,500, $4,500? I'd blow it on tea. <laughs> More tea. Yeah. So, and then finally, mm -hmm. the end of the Clipper ship trade yep. comes because in 1869. Dun, dun, dun. We got the Suez Canal. The Suez, Suez Canal is and it, opened. Yeah. So people didn't have to go around Africa anymore. They could just go through the Mediterranean and then around the Red Sea, and that probably cut the, the travel time in half, at least. It, it did. And and these these steamships had oh, sort of the right. bonus of both their predecessors. Right. So they're fast, and they can hold a lot. Right. So they could go up to 25 knots, yes. which is quite an improvement. Yes. So I, I think it's it's a good when you asked that question i thought that was you know one of those things again you take for granted yeah yeah, yeah. like how did that supply chain right. and we see things in the news about right. how these things can yeah. there, there can be things that affect your supply chain right uh, quickly yeah but we're we're very fortunate in that we don't have to wait that long for tea no in fact we can order from amazon today and yeah. it could be on our front porch tomorrow it's uh we live in a golden age we do and I think, though, we don't have the fanfare, no, perhaps. No. You know, we, we yeah. don't stay up all night waiting for that package. Maybe we should. <laughs> Sleep on the porch? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. No, that would be weird. That would be weird. Okay, so in the, the short time that we have left, I just want to talk real quickly about a couple of additions to our Pemberley Pines yes. tea garden. One of our favorite topics. One of our favorite topics. And a shout out to Glass Up Your Garden owner and creator, Kathy Pierce. Uh-huh. And we had a bit of serendipity last month yes. in August. We were up near Lexington right. for Astronomy Weekend. Right. We thought we'd go into Lexington, walk around, have lunch. Yep. Turns out they have their annual art fair. That was great. Highly and, recommended. Oh, it was wonderful. Yep. And as we were going past this booth, we saw the this glass up your garden, and we recognized yep, the product. Yeah, some of the pieces, yep. Because she does, among other things, she does glass flowers right. and you mm -hmm. know, uses dishes, et cetera. But she also has a collection of teapots, right? And she has them on these nice copper poles. You right. can put them in your flower bed, right. and then little crystals, yeah, go like down the the, the, the spout. spout, so yeah. it looks like it's pouring tea. Yeah. And we have that. And we were gifted that by our sailor friends. That's right. So they they come yeah. in handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. So anyway, when we saw this, we go, oh, yep. we love your stuff, and we wanted to get something else. Yep. So you picked out something rather lovely. A large ceramic flower that fits on a post and uh it's uh, one of the kind of the one of the centerpieces that we have right now right and it, it i like it because it it's not a what i call a shrinking violet no, literally no. it's no. bold yep it stands up to all those trees and yep. pines that's right so that i followed up with kathy after we had planted that in our garden mm -hmm. and i did a quick interview with her right that's in one of our september blog stories great great okay another thing that we added to our garden mm-hmm was peony seeds. Yes. And why why did we do that? Where did the those come from? Yes, not just run of the mill no. peony seeds. No. We got this when we were in Vermont uh -huh. when we visited Hildeen. Right. And that was the home of Robert Lincoln. After he downsized. After he downsized yep. to eight thousand square feet. Yep. So he is the son of Abraham Lincoln. The only surviving child that lived to that made it to adulthood that made it to adulthood yep. and this wasn't part of our you yep. know presidential home right, right, right. checklist but i mean this is about as yep. presidential adjacent as you can get yes so yep. he worked for a couple presidents yep. he's the son of a president yep. and he was very successful yeah so he own. ran I, for a while he ran the pullman uh railroad car company right which right. was you know this is the golden age of railroad right. so he was a big deal right he was yep. and so Ed Hilding, it's it's beautiful. It's yeah. so scenic, you right. know. And the ins, the interiors, the exteriors are are lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But one thing that really struck me was this visual that they have outside of the oh, front yeah. porch, mm -hmm. and it's a border, mm -hmm. in a square border of rocks. Right. And it outlines the perimeter of the log cabin that yep. Abraham Lincoln was born in. Yes. And it's. I don't know the exact size, but it's about the size of an average living room. Yes, yeah. You yeah. know, or a den. Right, right, right. Not right, real right. big. Yeah. And so it's just, it shows this contrast of how far this family came right. in a generation. Right. Exactly. And this is up against the downsized home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ugh. right. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, in we went to the gift shop, and you know, I love gift shops. Yes. 
So they had a lot of cool stuff, but they had these seeds, mm -hmm. these peony seeds, yep. and they come from the plant yep. that Robert's daughter uh -huh. gave to her mother. Yes. And these are heirloom seeds. Yes. So Rachel and I planted those seeds. Right. In our garden. It said to plant them in the fall, and uh -huh. then they'll come up in the spring. Yeah, and we're waiting. So we'll see if we get some history there. Nice. All right. Can't wait. Okay. So now, how are we doing on time? We got about uh, five minutes. Oh, excellent. So then I can talk about this cool, mm -hmm. doing my air quotes here yes. again. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> this cool new trend in home interior design. What crazy thing have you found now? Fridge scaping. What? <laughs> it's, it's a hard thing to say yeah. without laughing. Yeah. So I'm going to try <laughs> to get through this, but right. yep. fridge scaping. Yep. So this is the latest in home design. And I started seeing this show up uh -huh. on a lot of the my online magazines right. and uh -huh. think pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like home, uh, house, uh, good housekeeping and BuzzFeed. Yes. But it was also in Washington uh, Post. Yep. A lot of places were picking this up. Must have been a slow news day. <laughs> Bridgescaping, but it got over six million views on right. on Twitter. Uh huh. So I was like, "What? I have to know what this it, is." Right. So all the sources point. Typically, most of them gave credit to this blogger back in the day mm -hmm. in 2010. Uh huh. She coined the term. Her name's Kathy Purdue. She coined the term bridgescaping. Yes. But it's just recently that it took off because uh -huh. we had this TikToker from the Hudson Valley. Yeah. She got thousands, hundreds of thousands of hits right. from fans on her fridgescaping. Amazing. And she's only been doing it for less than a month. Wow. <laughs> Pretty good. So yeah. what is fridgescaping? Yep. Well, according to BuzzFeed, they gave us a definition. It's decorating and organizing the inside of your fridge to look stylistically and aesthetically pleasing. Hmm. Typically using things like baskets, mm -hmm. vases, pitchers, and other items to achieve a desired theme. Wow. I, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to have to, like, buy a different kind of beer, I guess. <laughs> it's going to no. fit in. <laughs> yes, we're, we're going to get to that. Okay. So, All right. So this, this TikToker, she came up with themes. She did uh, Beetlejuice. Uh -huh. She also did Bridgerton. Bridgerton. But she calls it Bridgerton. Wow. <laughs> She's genius. <laughs> <laughs> Is she? Is yeah, she really? Well, uh, <laughs> so I thought I'd try it up north yes. because our fridge up there is kind of a blank canvas. Right, right. We're pretty good about yeah, keeping cleaning it out. Yeah. Cleaning out. We don't let things accumulate. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and I'm going to do a moose theme uh -huh. because it fits with the woods, yeah. the wooded <laughs> area. And also I have a lot of moose decor that was... It was kismet. <laughs> yeah, it's easily within yeah. our reach. Right. So I completed it in 15 minutes uh -huh. and it shows yes okay yeah. all that time shows yeah. so what i did was i put fresh flowers in a moose teapot uh -huh. and then i put some meats and cheeses mm -hmm. in, artfully arranged artfully arranged in a moose bowl uh -huh. and that was set alongside the light beer yes and the na beer yes so it started to sound a little bit like queen elizabeth's breakfast, breakfast. yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> before frisier escapes we had her breakfast all right okay and then i topped all of that with a moose candle mm-hmm mm. So, Love it. Uh, yeah, it's no Fridgerton, but what yeah. can be? Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, anyway, t uh, the takeaway from this is I probably won't be doing that much. I think there's better use of my time. Yes. But it uh, looks like we've got to wrap up. Yep. I want to let everybody know that all three of these stories, Hildeen, yep. Bridgescaping, and Glass Up Your Garden, are in our blogs for September. Get it done. And I think I hear that sound. Oh, here we go. All right. Thanks to On TV. Thanks to my wonderful co-host, Chris Gully. And want to say, please stay tuned. Very good. Okay. Bye.